So today we have uh, Dr. Errol Hepsadeh and uh, Tarek uh, Khanda uh, to speak about AI and ML. So uh, Errol has worked in various countries for different operators like Optus in Australia, M1 in Singapore, Cable and Wireless in Vietnam, Korea Telecom and 3UK. Currently Errol is uh, working for Pi Networks and uh, ML and AI automation company as an advisor. He's a fellow at IET and was awarded Royal Academy of Engineering Visiting Professorship at Kent University, where he continues to teach advanced digital communications, information and uh, theory in mobile communication models. Um, after spending 30 years in the mobile industry, Errol understands the industry's requirement and his strong academic background enables him to link these industry requirements into research and technology innovation activities. So that is Errol. And also we have Tariq Kanda, is the lead product manager at uh, and researcher at uh, PI Networks. Uh, so he's res responsible for productizing uh, the of next generation network and automation solutions leveraged by AI and advanced optimization techniques. He received his BSc and MSc in computer science uh, engineering from Istanbul University and currently in the process of completing his dissertation for PhD, focusing on operational efficiency of wireless network with AI and ML. Uh, he is an author of uh, 10 patents and has been contributing to the ITUT machine learning focus groups and workshops. So he was a co-founder at Digiport Software and worked for Microsoft Turkey, Istanbul University, Innova, uh, Turk Telecom, Turk Cell before joining PI Works um, in 2015. So please welcome Tarik and Errol. Thank you. Hello. Thank you very much, Avaya. Too kind. Too kind. <laughs> uh, uh, thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. Uh, uh, this is this is one of the topics that uh, I discussed with Abaya uh, that might be interesting for for various people. We hear a lot about AI, a lot about uh, uh, machine learning, and different things. And sometimes you get confused. And network management, performance management, uh, people just use it quite regularly. And we just wanted to say, okay, as automation company. Uh, what kind of techniques can be used uh, to manage the network in a much more efficient way. So in this uh, presentation, uh, I will be going through a little bit easy part, what is being done today, and I will hand over to the hard part, which is machine learning and artificial intelligence and all of those to target as being the expert in that area. So let's start. Uh, for, for some audience, actually, who are not very familiar with mobile networks, we have got three components in a network. One of them is radio access network part, which has got thousands of sites all around the country that you see those ugly antennas on top of the roofs or, or on the, on the uh, towers. Uh, and we have to connect them to core networks. And we have got a core network as well, which is centralized in data centers. Uh, today, most core networks are being transformed uh, or migrating to a virtualized cloud kind of uh, uh, environment. Uh, and then we have to connect these radio sites to the core network. And we have got another very important uh, entity here, which is IP transmission network. So there are some IT networks that I'm not going to go into details, but uh, the main objective here is to focus on the network itself and mainly on the radio side. Uh, in a platform, it is always, I, uh, and, and, and uh, this is what the network looks like. And for the automation point of view, if you go back 10 years, we used to do everything manually. We used to try to identify the faults, try to fix them as engineers. That's what I used to do. And we used to find missing neighbors. And we used to try to see the performance 10 years ago, mostly run manually. But today we moved on significantly. And there is a automation platforms 
which is also in the 3GPP standards. And these platforms can run the network with no uh, interaction from the, the operators. And as long as they are using the same data set, uh, the, the SON function, SON stands for self-organizing networks, uh, performance management, network planning, geolocation, configuration management, and troubleshooting. They use the same platform and uh, run the network with almost zero touch. Tarek? And now uh, I will just go through just only a few of them. One of them is network tuning and troubleshooting. What, what happens automatically? The, the system collects data nonstop, 24 seven. And a huge amount of data is collected and the machines are churning this, this data and trying to find faults. Is there any better way we can improve the performance? Okay, so automatically it is identifying the troubles, problems and finding a solution and changing the parameters to solve the problems. Sorry. Uh, of course, to change the parameters, we have to have a configuration manager. So management system. And this configuration management has to work for different technologies, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G, uh, maybe, maybe beyond 5G, uh, and also multi-vendors. Each vendor has got unique set of uh, requirements, right? Of course, this is quite an exciting time now because uh, uh, not every mobile is reporting the, the latitude and longitude, the, the GPS locations, location information. So what happens? The network has to estimate the location of each mobile when there's an event occurs. And when the, 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 the geolocation system receives all the measurements from the network. It again, 24 seven crunches the numbers and locates the mobiles or UEs uh, in the uh, area. And then what happens? It can plot them on a map. By doing that, we can see where the traffic is, where the faults are. Uh, uh, of course, at the end of the day, performance management. The system, uh, as I mentioned before, collects the data and then does uh, uh, analytics and then uh, uh, displays the, the network performance uh, on, uh, on, the, on the system. And, and this is uh, accessible by uh, every level in the, in, the, in the company to troubleshoot and also to see the performance of the network. Now, whatever I was talking about, we're all today, uh, and, and the system uh, in, 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 in different modes crunches the numbers and fixes the problems and, and reports and displays, okay? Uh, however, operators sometimes want to see, okay, this is today, the network performance is working very well. However, in two, uh, 12 months time, I want to achieve, I'm just making up, five megabit per second average user throughput per, uh, in, in the network, how can I do that? How much investment do I need to do? How many more sites do I need? By inputting all the technology like MIMO, spectrum farming, 256QAM and all those technologies uh, and looking at the historical data in the network collected by all those, those uh, uh, products, the the son or, or, or uh, smart plan can predict the amount of traffic growth next 12 months and applies the technologies one by one, try to achieve the operator's uh, requirement of five megabit per second per customer. And to do that actually it uses various inputs, churn, uh, the, the, the number of customer growth uh, and also the new uh, new uh, uh, promotions by the marketing teams. So it is using the measured data and predicting the future. And guess what? The AI machine and machine learning and, and estimation, everything comes into picture big time. So now I'm going to hand over to Tarek uh, 
And then he is the one actually working on a PhD. He's a PhD candidate on machine learning and he's leading the developments in PI works on machine learning. Over to you, Tariq. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everybody. This is Tariq from the PI Works headquarters team. Uh, I will try to introduce you why do we need machine learning? What is forcing us to do more complex automation solutions in here? As you know, the technology is advancing uh, based on the business requirements, and these business requirements are changing every day, and the problems managing networks is getting more complex. Even when we are going through, when we are rollouting uh, 4G on top of 3G technology, the complexity of network management increased seven times because new frequencies introduced, new antenna types came into play, the technology behind in the core network side. Uh, also, there were some changes, a different core network has been introduced, EPC, uh, and the, all these advancements also uh, required some more human resources to manage a network or increasing the uh, overload on top of some operation engineers a lot. So automation requirements is uh, excessive uh, in recent years. That's why we are managing networks in an automated fashion for the last 10 years. But of course, the problems are also changing because new technologies are arriving like virtualization. Why you virtualize something? What does it mean, virtualization? Virtualization is softwareization of of some equipments. So you do not need specific proprietary equipments, hardwares anymore. You can just use some bare metal servers for some specific purposes. In last uh, five years, we start to see transformation uh, of mobile networks to softwareization. So we, especially in core network side, for example, we see virtual equipments. In past, there were some PCRF solutions, for example, some MMEs on specific hardware. Now we see in with 5G, especially all the equipments are uh, virtualized. We see uh, PCF uh, as a, a virtual network function, which means it's just a software. It's a uh, Linux uh, based uh, application, microservices communicating with each other. And next to it, there are some other uh, advancements in the technology like machine MIMO antennas, network slicing, so virtual networks in, on top of an existing network. There are some uh, virtual networks assigned for specific traffic types under some service level agreements. All these advancements require uh, more uh, complex problem uh, solutions. Uh, understanding each customer's demand understanding each customer's expectation will require you to collect different types of data. So the dimensions of the data you are able to collect will increase tremendously. Uh, when we check what kind of data sources we are using uh, when we are resolving a, a problem uh, by using more advanced automation solutions in scope of machine learning. For example, we are collecting statistics from core network equipment, especially with 5G core network, there will be new entities like network, uh, 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 network data analytics function and WDAF, which is being uh, standardized with release 15 and release 16. Network exposure function, at the left side, these uh, equipment, these entities, uh, uh, network functions, will provide you on which network slice, how many users, in which hours of today are making some uh, uh, sessions uh, for some specific purposes which through the which applications all these statistics uh, will play a key role for example in future when you are evaluating these statistics or also we are collecting for a long time the oss statistics oss statistics are uh, operational support system statistics uh, how many users connected to which specific base station uh, how my, uh, what is the amount of traffic in the busy hours of the network? Uh, how many handovers? So uh, built connections are moved to that cell or go out of that cell to the neighbor cell. This type of statistics are collected from the OSS, but next to it, we are also collecting customer experience management uh, system statistics as well. Uh, so what is the throughput of video streaming users? Uh, what are the uh, customer complaints, what are the specific locations of the customer complaints, uh, which are provided through the CRM systems, for example, or some external data, 
uh, it is possible to use for some specific uh, reasons. What is the external data? We are making speed tests, right? Uh, all these data can also be used as a crowdsource collected data to give some idea about the throughput levels on that specific region or some latency uh, statistics for gamers on specific area. This can be also uh, be another input for a next generation automation solution. Also, network slice management systems, uh, virtual network function manager statistics uh, will be an input for, uh, for automation purposes uh, as well. So the data is increasing a lot. And for some specific reasons, we have to use different data from different domains uh, to uh, decide accurately on a specific problem. Uh, to optimize network, uh, to decide about a capacity investment uh, for a, a, a certain area of the network, for example. Uh, when we look to, I, I, at this section of the presentation, I will give a little brief information about the concepts of machine learning, because there are some misusages in the industry a lot. Uh, people are using uh, deep learning uh, like it is a, uh, the same thing uh, as the machine learning, actually it is a subset of it. Like, uh, so I, I want to give some brief information about the types of machine learning in this part. Maybe some of you already know about this. This can be a little boring for them, but uh, for the huge audience, I think it will be helpful for the use cases slides when I'm explaining on which area that we are using which algorithms for some specific problems. Uh, the, the artificial intelligence, uh, actually uh, is the common name of the systems uh, that resolves some problems in a human-alike approach. Uh, when we consider human-alike approach, we are talking about providing some algorithms under some certain constraints, and you can optimize these algorithms by using data, or you can optimize this algorithm by defining some mathematical models provided by you by making some statistical analysis. So it can be even a rule, rule engine at the base side providing you some solutions. Uh, these are also in the scope of uh, intelligent systems. But machine learning is the most advanced way of this artificial intelligence superset. Uh, it, it is also providing some intelligent system. Intelligent system means you solve the problem with no human requirement, no human involvement. So you provide a solution by using data at the backside and the patterns and the rules inside the data is hidden. And by using some machine learning models, you optimize your machine learning models by using some optimization algorithms at the backside. You uh, reveal all these, you unveil all these patterns and you shape your model to solve this uh, problem with, uh, when addressing uh, your solution with on top of an unseen data. So machine learning is a subject of artificial intelligence. People are using sometimes uh, co confusing uh, both this terminology to each other. And deep learning also uh, started to be more prominent in the last five years. Even uh, the history of deep learning uh, starts uh, when we consider the first perceptron uh, at the 1950s. Uh, by the increasing of layers, neural networks turned into the deep learning, especially up after 2012. And uh, deep learning is a special type of machine learning uh, as a subset of neural network topics. Uh, when you are solving a problem, you can define your own rules. These rules, you know, if it's done that type of uh, approaches, uh, rule-based systems, uh, a subject matter expert on a specific topic knows under some certain circumstances what should be changed, how it should be uh, directed, how the network or how the energy system, how the automa uh, 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 autom an automobile uh, should be directed. Uh, the, these rules can be defined programmatically. We are not calling this as a machine learning uh, solution because rules are defined by the subject matter expert. If the number of rules 
are increasing generally tree-based approaches introduced our life. It is also a traditional approach to the problems. But if these rules and the data and the variance in the data increases a lot, more complex solutions is required where we introduce different types of machine learning algorithms at this point. Uh, there are different types of machine learning algorithms. I will classify them in the upcoming slides. We call, if there is a human which is helping to the system when introducing uh, the type of the data or class of the data or under some, uh, under, uh, uh, under specific uh, measurements, what will be the output, then we are supervising the system. System is getting this information from a human and tuning all these coefficients, all these mathematical model at the backside using our knowledge, our information, our direction. So this is called supervised learning. And unsupervised learning part, there is no such a labeled information or human uh, support to the systems. This is generally used for uh, understanding the patterns, uh, the correlation relations in between uh, huge data sets or reduction, uh, some features of the data you, uh, and uh, help, uh, uh, keeping decreasing it to the less number of uh, features, which will be more helpful for, for a specific solution. For this type of purposes, uh, uh, to understand these patterns and the relations, uh, we generally use these unsupervised learning models. And uh, in the last year, there is another type of machine learning, which is called reinforcement learning. It is specific to train some agents uh, by some um, making some uh, uh, exploiting and exploring uh, activities on a specific environment, discovering the uh, strategy uh, by some rewarding and penalty mechanisms at the base side, which is a new approach to some optimization problems under uh, complex uh, optimization problems. Uh, machine learning is a multidisciplinary, uh, generally machine learning projects requires multidisciplinary uh, involvement. Uh, generally, we put one subject matter expert next to the machine learning engineer, because even you bring the uh, top talented uh, machine learning engineer to the problem, uh, at the understanding of the problem stage, there will be so many questions in his mind. Uh, providing the correct, uh, finding the correct problem, uh, providing the correct uh, accuracy metrics and acceptance criteria for the solution, uh, uh, providing uh, information about the data in the end, where we can collect the data, which columns of the data, uh, what does it mean, uh, and where can I find uh, the explanation of the semi-structured data, etc. All these type of questions are provided generally from the subject matter expert. But machine learning engineers bring some math and statistics background to the solution and computer science backgrounds for uh, programming skills because uh, whatever you uh, assume in your, uh, as, as a solution, uh, you have to try and see if it is working and you have to take some tuning actions uh, as a, a general follower. Before it, of course, data cleaning, anomaly detection and removal actions, uh, data standardization, normalization activities, feature selection, feature extracting, feature crafting, all these activities also require some programming skills at the uh, right side. Um, when we look at mobile network operator, there are very different, very, very different uh, use cases. Uh, in a mobile network, there are different departments. Network operations center is just one of them which are responsible from automated management of base stations, transmission network equipments, router switches, and the core network equipment. But in, a, uh, in an operator, there are customer uh, relations management department as well, which can work on customer change prediction algorithms. The churning activities, which means you lose one of your subscribers, one of your customers to your competitor. Uh, demand forecasting and capacity planning is a network planning activity. Geolocation, geolocating customer events, where there are some drops, where, where, where are the locations that we have low throughput levels for Netflix users, for example, or where we have some latency problems 
for uh, gamers. Uh, identifying, geolocating, all the distribution of this customer experience on a map view, which requires some uh, boosting algorithms like the best backside to find out the locations. Prediction, predictive, predictive optimization actions for energy saving, load balancing, customer risk scoring, using virtual assistant at the uh, customer care centers. There are very different types of use cases. You can use machine learning in a mobile network uh, operator. There are three types of machine learnings when we look from the problems or goal aspects. We call it classification problems, regression problems, or clustering problems. So based on the type of your solution, your goal, you can select a classification model to solve the problem or train a model, or you can select a regression model to solve uh, your requirement. Uh, we go, if we go into detail, classifications are, uh, you know, uh, for example, if I label, if I want to label base stations as good performing base stations and bad performing base stations, this means a basic binary classification problem. Uh, this binary classification uh, can be uh, leveraged to multi uh, multi uh, uh, class classification problems as well. Uh, gamer base stations, uh, video streaming base stations, VIP base stations, highway base stations, uh, all this type of base station information can be extracted from performance counters or customer usage statistics, etc. So when you are making some optimization actions, configuration on those specific cells, you can consider this class type of the cell. And also for regression problems, we estimate uh, the, a number, a statistics for the feature of, the, uh, of a base station, for example. If we are regressing a number, if trying to get a number under some measurements, uh, what will be the total number of capacity fails on that specific cell, which means a regression problem, or what will be the number of traffic next night on that specific base station. This is a regression problem. So if our goal is to estimate that number, estimate that measurement, uh, unseen measurement for us, which uh, provides us to implement a regression model, tune a regression model for that specific problem. In clustering, uh, if I have a uh, different type of size in the hand, uh, I, I want to group uh, them based on their performances, for example, without any label information. Uh, for this purpose, uh, we can use different types of clustering algorithms, hierarchical clustering, well mixture models, DB scan algorithm. There are uh, tens of them you can use. Uh, clustering means grouping these data based on some hidden patterns inside it, based on the variance inside it, uh, on uh, inside some features. Uh, the uh, problem type uh, is addressed as clustering problem uh, in this manner. Uh, after these three types of uh, uh, goal, uh, goals in machine learning problems, uh, I would like to mention deep learning a little more. Deep learning, as I mentioned in the beginning, is a special type of machine learning under the subcategory of neural networks. More advanced neural networks are addressed as deep learning because the data increased a lot in recent years since it is cheaper now comparing to past years. And also computational power increased a lot. New activation functions, new optimization functions arrived in the academia. So we are able to use them in an efficient way. So we are able to put more neurons and more layers in our solution to build a deep learning based solution. Deep learning based solutions are better to model more nonlinear and more complex solutions. Uh, for example, if you are uh, trying to understand the basic, uh, one of the most common uh, samples of the deep learning is image and video recognition solutions, right? Understanding the entities or elements or the people inside a specific image. This is one of the usages of deep learning, uh, but generally in, uh, we do not use such uh, uh, 
solutions generally on network management side, we use time series uh, processing uh, based solutions uh, as a deep learning uh, problem scope, or we use generally uh, for uh, spatio temporal analysis uh, for uh, a, a, as a as a solution based on top of deep learning generally in uh, telecommunication network management uh, solutions. Uh, reinforcement learning, as I mentioned, based on some rewarding and penalty mechanisms, those agents are trained on, on a simulation environment generally because anyone wants to put, no one wants to put uh, an, an uh, untrained agent on a, uh, on a network which can cause uh, some uh, dramatic uh, problems on your network because it will try to discover uh, by changing some, some configuration parameters on your network. That's why uh, we create some environment for these agents to be trained in simulators. And by training those agents, you prepare these agents. Uh, it, it, it makes some uh, um, exploiting. It changes some uh, configuration parameters and see uh, the rewards and penalties, get some penalties to build a good strategy. After uh, getting a little mature, you can try it for some personal implementation areas, etc. This is a very new type of machine learning currently. Academia is generally uh, studying uh, on it you know, for the uh, telecommunication side, but in the industry, in automation cars, some drone management uh, softwares, uh, you are able to see it on production uh, already. Um, for the people in the audience who wants to uh, get a uh, full understanding of which machine learning algorithms are being used in scope of self-organizing networks. As Errol mentioned in the beginning, self-organizing networks are solutions which are managing your network with no human requirements. What does it mean? Changing the direction of tilting and up tilting a base station or um, assigning some uh, putting some new neighbors in top of, I, I, inside the uh, neighbor list of some specific uh, uh, cells, or uh, if you face some outages on a specific cell, uh, finding out best neighbors, uh, which will be uh, helping to serve that specific area uh, in scope of uh, cell outage detection and compensation. So uh, these self-organizing network solutions are divided into three category, uh, self-configuration modules, self-optimization uh, modules, and self-healing modules. There are different uh, uh, modules in these three categories, and you can uh, get a list of uh, machine learning algorithms, which are tried in the academia or industry to solve these problems. Uh, here, there is a reference for this survey, it's a survey of machine learning techniques applied of applied to self-organizing uh, cellular networks. You can find it. Uh, when deciding on uh, which machine learning model to be used, there are uh, different types of criteria you have to consider. If uh, the machine learning model is data hungry, uh, and if you have less data, this will be a specific criteria when you are choosing a machine learning model. Some of them are less data angry. Deep learning models, for example, requires more data. Some statistical machine learning models can uh, do uh, very decent work with less data. Uh, the scalability of your solution, how much training time you will have, because retraining uh, can require for some specific batch uh, uh, training uh, problems. The accuracy, what kind of accuracy metrics you will use for this specific problem uh, based on your acceptance criteria, the complexity uh, and the response time. All these criteria uh, will play a critical role for a machine learning engineer who will be providing these solutions. As Tarek, you see- I think, Tarek, uh, sorry, Tarek, uh, we need to uh, skip a, a few slides actually because the time is pressing at the moment. Okay, okay. So this survey uh, uh, also can help you to have some idea on these uh, machine learning uh, types. 
uh, and uh, their uh, selection under some uh, criteria. Uh, when we look uh, our journey as uh, automated management of uh, mobile networks, we started the journey with understanding what has, what has happened uh, on this network. Uh, this is called descriptive analytics. It is followed by diagnostic analytics uh, to understand what is the reason for this problem. Why did it happen? And we now move to the predictive analytics. Before something happens on the network, we are trying to estimate it. Before having some capacity failures, we are trying to estimate it. Um, before having an outage, we are trying to estimate it if there are some indicators in the performance counters, for example. And also, it is we are on the way of prescriptive analytics. So defining a st strategy, making some what-if analysis, if I spend this investment for this area, for example, how it can help my video streaming experience, this type of uh, prescriptive analytics uh, will be uh, the uh, solutions that we are currently working on. There are some use cases I would like to share where we are using. For example, in geolocation uh, solution, we are geolo geolocating uh, different users uh, and their problems uh, problematic events uh, on the network. Uh, for these purposes, some uh, boosting algorithms and Bayesian inference techniques are helping us. Where are those users? Anonymously, of course, by uh, knowing the GDPR rules, uh, just uh, about the experience. Where are the gamers a lot? Where are the video streamers? Uh, where are the handover locations? Where are drops are happening a lot? Are these drops happening inside of a building or outside of a building? So indoor and outdoor labeling, or these are uh, mobile users or stationary users. Labeling all these information requires some boosting and Bayesian inference type uh, models. Generally, we are using ensemble models uh, since these are um, uh, high bias problems. Uh, also, in uh, classification uh, site, uh, we are using some classification algorithms to label sites for VIP sites, seasonal sites, motorway sites. So AI augmented uh, labeling is also possible. Uh, if you know it is a motorway site, for example, when you are tuning uh, handover parameters on the network, you can give it a, more, a, b a bigger buffer. You can uh, change uh, these configuration parameters uh, carefully. Uh, so these augmented labeling of different types of base stations help you to uh, give more accurate decisions on the network. Uh, when we look at another problem, network runs life management. So now currently we are using a network for different purposes. There are some mobile users uh, who are using their cell phones to access uh, a vo vo watching a YouTube video, for example. Also, there are some fixed wireless access devices at home. You know, uh, those devices, they are uh, propagating Wi-Fi signal at home, but with a SIM card, they are connected to the uh, mobile cells. So these uh, uh, different types of users are affecting each other at the specific hours of a day, especially uh, during the evening hours, uh, they are trying to watch Netflix series, for example, which is causing a lot of traffic on the network. So uh, by considering the SLAs and customer experience, you have to prioritize traffic in between these two users. Uh, when you are serving to fixed wireless access devices, you should also ensure that mobile users can also watch some HD quality YouTube videos. For this type of purposes, for example, we are using some uh, uh, clustering algorithms to cluster the levels of the problem. And based on this clustering, also we are estimating next hour experiences on that specific cell uh, by using the autocorrelation uh, statistics of those cells. And we are prioritizing uh, traffic uh, by using some uh, expectation maxim maximization algorithms at the backside. This is another usage uh, of, of an uh, uh, machine learning. For example, here, the blue one is the mobile uh, user's uh, throughput levels. When we start to activate it after this period, uh, you see 
their throughput levels increased a lot. The gap between the fixed wireless users and the mobile users are uh, uh, closed a lot uh, by making some by making some changes on the BP, BPU scheduling algorithm uh, of the base stations uh, by using machine learning. Also, by using machine learning, we are able to predict how many users, how many, how how much traffic will be carried on that specific cell, how many users will be connected during these night hours. If there are not enough users on the on the uh, on the cell, uh, why we are opening this much carrier? Generally, base stations are planned for busy hours, so there are so many cells serving to the same uh, direction. Uh, but during the midnight hours or in shopping centers, they are closed. For, you know that uh, weekdays after 12 o'clock, there will be not uh, so much users. So you can start to, to turn off these uh, frequency layers to save some energy. We are working in Celtic Next projects in, uh, 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 named AI for Green. Uh, we are uh, deploying our predictive energy saving algorithm on live networks. We are trying to enhance it every day with different approaches. Uh, for example, we are currently working on graph networks to, to bring spatio-temporal analysis uh, by uh, um, trying to understand uh, users' movement, subscribers moving during day hours in the uh, city routes. And using this information, we will be turn off and turn on some carriers for energy saving purposes. So we are trying to regress next hour statistics. And after that, we are uh, turning off some unnecessary carriers during night, saving some energy. And in the early hours of the day, we are turning on them back again. If you are making this proactive approach on top of a reactive approach, AI helps you to increase energy efficiency by 18%. Comparing to a reactive approach, predicting next hour statistics and acting accordingly uh, uh, helps you to save 18 percent more energy. Uh, one of the last samples I would like to share is we are trying to understand seasonality for capacity investment times of the base stations. There are summer cells, there, there are winter cells. Or, uh, at the city resorts, you know, uh, cells are having their Busy star in one year lifetime at the winters uh, in a summer location in the beaches it is totally uh, opposite uh, in the summer period there are more users connected to those cells so we are trying to understand annual seasonality and weekly seasonality of those cells especially for long term investment you have to make long term forecasting for this type of purposes you have to understand. You have to process two years, three years uh, historical data of the busy hours of a cell. There will be so many anomalies inside. You know, we went into the pandemic, for example. You have to be aware of it. You have to understand change point uh, detection. You have to make some change point detection. If the uh, levels are shifted down for some specific reasons, maybe there, will, there were some investments next to this specific cell or site. You have to uh, clean uh, all this information, noisy information, when you are making some forecasting, for example, and you have to understand change points. You have to, uh, because change points are generally mixing with seasonality characteristics of the sites. Uh, many sites are showing uh, multiplicative seasonality effects uh, on the field. So you have to uh, extract all these components of the time series the sequential data, and uh, by this, you can understand the trends, and you can understand when you make some extensions uh, on that specific summer location for that specific tower. Uh, uh, for these purposes, you can use some uh, time series-based models, uh, statistical time series-based models, but generally, they are working on stationary data, or you have to stationarize data by making some statistical analysis on top of it, or you can use some boosting-based algorithms. Uh, there are many different types of algorithms used in, in scope of this type of problems, support vector regressions, 
uh, random forests are even used in the uh, academia a lot. But recently, there are specific types of neural networks which are called LSTMs, long short term memory, and uh, gated rec uh, recurrent units uh, to uh, uh, resolve gradient vanishing problems of these time series problems. Where you are able to uh, use uh, these type of uh, deep learning algorithms for making forecasting uh, for to, to forecast the uh, future network traffic of the uh, cell. Uh, this is the last slide in my presentation. Then we will have some questions at last 10 minutes. Uh, 3GPP is also uh, trying to support these analytics approach for mobile networks management. For these purposes, uh, in SA5 and SA2 committees of 3GPP, there are new standards, these new entities trying to be introduced. One of them is MDAF in uh, SA5 committee. The other one is S in the SA2 is NWDAF. So these new equipment, for example, in a 5G core network will be able to communicate all these other 5G core elements uh, in a standardized way, standardized way, not uh, as a probe solution. It will help you to collect, this entity will collect uh, on which location, uh, we, uh, which applications are used on which network slices. And these statistics will help you to make some anomaly detection or subscriber experience uh, problems. And you can, by using these insights uh, that will be revealed inside this, in the scope of this equipment, you can uh, take some automated actions with your self-organizing network solution, et cetera. So in the next generation mobile networks also, the standards are being changed into uh, make uh, statistics collection easier, uh, re uh, unveiling some insights by using some machine learning algorithms. These type of things are, so, are also getting standardized. Uh, this one, the, the, this is the last thing. I would like to add at the end of my uh, presentation. Okay, so thank you, Tarek and Errol. Uh, so just to let uh, everybody know, uh, the way we are going to see is if you have any questions, please type um, in the Q&A window, not on the chat window. So. So thanks for some of those who helped uh, uh, clearing some problems in the in the um, in the formatting. Uh, so uh, also before I um, I think the first question is about the, uh, can the slides be available? I think uh, at the beginning uh, Tariq and Errol mentioned that there are some confidential information. Therefore, they can't make the slide pack available as it's on. But uh, the video recording will be available uh, on. IET Baksha YouTube channel. So we have a couple of questions so far. Firstly, it's Peter is asking, how is it uh, predicting traffic so as to decide whether to switch the base station on or off can save so much energy? Why can't mm -hmm. the base stations mm -hmm. simply uh, measure traffic and switch off, switch on adjacent cells when a threshold is rich? Yeah. Yeah, uh, actually, as I said in the presentation, there are many cells serving to uh, a, a certain ankle uh, on a tower. Uh, we call them as carriers. And these carriers are serving under different frequencies. Uh, generally, they are built in that way because during the busy hours of today, the there are so many users at that specific ankle, uh, the pr uh, signal propagation area. Uh, but in the uh, late hours of the day, for example, uh, the number of users are decreasing because everyone is going to sleep. And uh, by some uh, specific intervals, it is changing from vendor to vendor. Uh, in five minutes intervals, we are able to see how many users are connected. Uh, what is the amount of traffic uh, uh, carried uh, on that specific uh, hour? And when you look to autocorrelation, of these uh, measurements, for example, if you look to six weeks history of the uh, data, you will see some autocorrelation uh, to predict the upcoming hours 
in a, a more confident way by using this information. These the, the thresholds uh, can be changed uh, by mobile network operator policy. Uh, the number of users will go below five. It is an action for us to turn off a carrier, for example. It is uh, adjustable, it is configurable. Uh, but the general idea where we use machine learning for energy saving is uh, like I explained. Okay, uh, so there's another question about where can we get the recording? Recordings will be available uh, in IET Berkshire YouTube channel. So if you search for IET Berkshire in YouTube, uh, you will see the IT Berkshire YouTube channel and it will be available in a few days time. Uh, so the next question is, uh, would uh, it would be great to understand what is the accuracy of used uh, machine learning algorithms in real tests? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, these accuracy metrics uh, actually changing from problem to problem. Uh, for example, if you are making a prediction algorithm, if you are predicting next year's traffic, for example, you have to have 90% uh, if you are using mean obsolete percentage error, for example, uh, then this means that approximately if you are providing a 90% uh, correct traffic estimation uh, for top seasonal period of that specific cell, you, are, you can say you can consider it as a good estimation uh, because there can be uh, some uh, confidence uh, zone uh, fluctuations. Uh, uh, you, you should provide this uh, confidence area buffers together uh, but in another problem, uh, it is not about estimating the traffic. In another problem, it's, it's, it's for example, geolocating a drop location. In a dense urban area, if you are uh, providing uh, a 50 meters uh, estimation, then you are doing really great job. Uh, if, if you are estimating the geolocation of a drop event with 50 meter uh, uh, error, then you are making a, a good solution. So as I uh, shared in the energy saving slide, for example, UE numbers are uh, estimated with 93% uh, accuracy. Uh, you, you, so over the 90% accuracy generally we are accepting for some regression problems. Okay, thank you, Tariq. Uh, and I think questions are started to come now, Tariq. So let's try to answer briefly so we can oh, okay. get uh, more questions answers. So Ed is asking a couple of questions. Firstly, how do you see AI machine learning assisting with the uh, security incidents in mobile networks, mm -hmm. for example, real-time uh, attacks and traffic overload in multiple network mm -hmm. nodes? Yeah, it's, 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 it's very different area of my... Uh, proficiency, actually, security is a very different topic. There are many companies working on the security topic as well. You know, uh, if you see, for example, uh, the uh, number of IoT nodes connected to your system, you know, there are some attacks on the network by hacking some IoT devices and making some those attacks to your network, right? If you know that those equipments, for example, generally report their measurements, uh, if smart meters at London, for example, are reporting their measurements during the evening hours, if you know those type of statistics and if you are continuous to monitoring this information, if it is, uh, uh, this traffic is generated as you expected, if there is a huge deviation or if there is a uh, unexpected hour traffic, uh, for IoT devices, you can trigger some actions. This type of statistic online learning solutions are generally used for uh, security intrusion detection. Uh, this, is the, uh, this is an answer from my general culture. I am not a security expert actually, but I know that this is another usage of machine learning highly used for security companies. Okay, so next question again, Ed is asking, are there any real life examples of where AI ML approach has helped network operator with the business case and network expansion? I take this one out, Tarek. Yes, there are, mm -hmm. and several operators, we are working with several uh, operators actually, and they, we are really seeing very, very exciting results using their measurements in the network, 
last a couple of years and then predicting the traffic in the future. And we are seeing very, very exciting uh, results on that. Uh, and it is just a space to watch uh, for the operators to go in that direction uh, to plan their investment uh, in their network. How uh, uh, it is, the accuracy is incredible. Okay, so uh, Philip is asking, can the techniques you described uh, be applied to other forms of uh, intense data processing, uh, for example, predicting weather conditions, uh, the traditional approach of using uh, powerful computing power to predict weather conditions is expensive and environmentally unfriendly. So it's asking about... Uh, technically, uh, I, I will just uh, uh, these, uh, answer this question. Uh, uh, as a sub uh, as a part of subjective view, yes, it is possible. Generally, these machine learning algorithms are taking its power from mat uh, from mathematics and statistics, and uh, uh, the technological advancements in the area. Uh, for example, many times I am using for time series type of problems. I am using economy uh, papers. In the economy, the time series are started to be studied earlier than telecommunication industry, for example. Of course, all these models, all these regression models, classification, clustering models can be used for weather prediction as well. I know that there are some open source solutions who are trying to predict weather as well by using machine learning. I had seen uh, a few of them. Also, weather information is another input which is used in telecommunication industry because on bad weather conditions, uh, this is uh, the reason of some uh, best performing sites. Uh, so this is another input that we are considering as well. But it is the answer is generally yes. Okay, so I think um, I think uh, there are just one last question. But uh, before I answer that question, um, uh, we are nearing to the time as well. So about the CPD certificates, uh, please contact uh, me. Um, uh, so for, I, I, will try I, I see I see a good good question from somewhere. What will be the role of AIML in Open RAM in relation to orchestration and radio intelligent controller? It's 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 a very good question. Yeah, uh, in Open RAM uh, there is a, a new entity which is called radio intelligent controller, and inside this entity, uh, it is open to all vendors, all academia that you can develop your own machine learning algorithm, uh, which will be run on top of the BBU next to the network equipment. And it will help you to decrease your time, uh, acting time below 10 milliseconds. I hope the advancements on this entity uh, can go on uh, and we can see major uh, solutions in the industry. Uh, so the orchestration part, uh, will can be done by self-organizing network, centralized self-organizing network solutions, because we are able to look to network from a wider window. Uh, we are looking to historical data. We are looking to customer experience, customer complaints, etc., and also some some specific modules or algorithms can also be deployed inside the rig components. So the centralized zone solution will know at which, for which specific problems it will be resolved inside RIC, for which specific decisions will be extracted in centralized area and will be pushed to the edge. So centralized self-organizing network vendors will play a critical role, I think, uh, for the orchestration of this uh, open run RIC controller. Okay, so I think uh, this is the last question. So um, Pete is asking very briefly, Tarek, if you can answer, uh, when you switch off the uh, base station to save energy, do you take uh, account of the type of user? Uh, for example, industrial users may be off uh, low data volume, but if uh, the comms is interrupted, they may get critical alarms in the control center. Uh, we are not switching off all the base stations on, on a specific area. One, one carrier is always up and running. Or if there are more users at that specific car, at least two carriers will be serving. 
because you cannot make coverage gap uh, because of energy savings. If there are six carriers serving to one direction, maybe three or four of them will be useful for that specific car. Two of them will be up and running. But at worst case, one is always up and running based on your aggressiveness, uh, 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 aggressiveness tendency for energy saving. It is a policy, it is configurable, and you can configure it based on your uh, choice. Okay, so that was the last question. And uh, actually, before um, we go away, um, so firstly, I'd like to thank um, IT support staff and um, Lucy, who was there for us in the evening to help us, and also my uh, co uh, fellow committee members, particularly Keith, who helped us uh, get this uh, running. Uh, and thank you, Errol and Tariq. So it was very interesting. I really enjoyed uh, looking at the real life uh, examples and use cases. So uh, your you know, de detailed understanding of the subject gave me a very good insight and to everybody. So there are a few thank yous as well on the chat window. So thank you very much. And it was a very interesting topic for me as well. And uh, so finally, thank you everyone, um, over 100, uh, I think 150 um, of you joined tonight. Uh, so thank you all and stay tuned. Uh, we have a few more events coming up as I explained earlier and have a great evening. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Abaya. Thank you.